they write down when you pre-reg, you're now number 100, and then they got to find badge 100, which takes a bunch of time. No, no, no. Don't write any number. And then when the guy shows up, give him the next badge. Give him the order in which they show up to MAGFest. Now, there are, they do one thing that is kind of nice. I don't know how I feel about it, right? Um, which is if you decide to pay more money, you can get a better badge, right? Those are real nice badges. They're really nice. You can get these big acrylic badges, and they also had these plastic ones. I the, saw one guy with a wood one. I don't know if he made it or if that I was... don't know, but I think you pay more money, you get a better badge. But the better badge, what was different about it was it doesn't get you anything except the better badge. It's like, look, I paid a bunch of money to support MAGFest. Now, I'm we're both way against, like, Comic-Con style. We're yeah, like, if you pay more, you like, the lot. It's like, pay more. You get to see Stan Lee no matter what, and you get a bunch of merch, and you get a t-shirt, and you get all this stuff. It's like, well, it's not really fair. Someone paid more money, they get to cut the line. I mean, look at PAX. It's super underpriced because everyone's got time. Not everyone has money. That's right. But, Which, at, but with MAGFest, the super supporters really don't seem to get much of anything except They don't get badge. anything except a better badge. They had to stand in that same line. Yeah. And but I, that is, the thing is, the reason it's relevant is because that's how they look, they look you up to see if you're a super supporter or regular supporter. And those people actually have their names are already written on the badges pre-engraved. Right, but I think the thing what they could do well is, have them check in like guests exactly right, or if you mailed them the veg. Also, just how do you ha how did it take an hour for you to deal with ten people? And because they didn't have any process for dealing with a problem, like we get up there and we're not on the list. We're doing panels, and they had no way to resolve that situation. They didn't have like uh, okay, if you have a problem, go over here to this one person who's only going to deal with problems. Nothing. Yep. All right, so that's. Most of what was bad at MAGFest. Yeah, I, I have no other major bad reg, complaints. Bad BO, general level of unprofessionalism that needs to be professionalized at the top as the convention grows. Yeah. Um, oh, the, uh, one other thing that was bad was a panel scheduling. They didn't leave any gaps between panels. But Tim knows. They the know. The panels. He was like, yeah, we wanted to do yeah. that. Next year we're doing it. They know they're going to fix it, but I got, you know, they, it was a problem this year. They had a, a panel that ended at three and a panel that started at three. They also didn't do explicit room clears. Because a couple of panels, like sometimes people, I did see sometimes rooms got cleared. No, they some, cleared them, but they didn't have any policy about it. So the people true. in the room were all pissed off now because they they thought they were going to see the next panel. Yeah, and then they had the shuffle of trying to force everyone out, force everyone in, and yeah, that was a little problematic. I guess if we're going to complain, the, the the projector was a teeny bit dark. Yeah, and the hotel, uh, the tabletop library was meager, non-existent. <laughs> but we brought it. We brought a library. We brought, we brought a better library than they had. Uh, I don't know. There weren't enough tables for tabletop gaming. That's but what are you going to do in that venue? The hotel. This is kind of a weird aside. There is. I don't know how that hotel got away with it. The fire marshal, like fire code numbers in those rooms were bullshit. They were astronomical. It's They're, like I would go into a room, and if you asked me, all right, I'm, I'm holding my hand over the numbers, right? Scott, tell me how many people the fire marshal would allow in this room. I'd be like, what, 40 with, people? With no chairs and no tables. No chairs, no tables. I'd be, like, 40. I'd be like 40 or 50 max. 95. 95. I was like, that is bullshit. If you were 95 people in here, we'd be dead. Either that hotel bribed someone a long time ago, or Alexandria has way different laws from cities. Yeah, Alexandria, Virginia, I don't know what your fire marshal's up to, but he might be mad corrupt. Or that, that hotel is corrupt or something, because that was not... <laughs> I mean, the numbers were... Not only were the numbers dangerous, but you could not fit that many people in the rooms. Yeah. Like, physically. I don't know where... Maybe they change the walls. I think they have a sardine law. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if you, can, if you can, you know, close it with a little piece of metal and twist a, a lid on it, then it's safe. Now, it's not a complaint against MAGFest. There's nothing they could do about that other than moving venues, which they should. That venue's they terrible. They absolutely should. It was not good. I mean, the concert space is itty-bitty. We didn't even go to the concerts because there's yeah, no I, way. I, I can't comment on the quality of the concerts. I'm sure, you know, everyone who went to them was, like, super excited about the bands they saw and whatever, you know, so I'm sure that the music was excellent. But you it know, was a tiny the, room. When I looked into that room bef while it was being set up, it was a very small room. It was smaller than like some rooms in panels. And they in. wouldn't let you bring a bag in there. So yeah. we, I was like, I'm not leaving my bag anywhere, so I can't go in there. So... But the reason I bring up the fire code stuff is that MAGFest is used to this because they're in Alexandria. For whatever reason, it has this weird fire marshal La La Land. Katsuka and all the con other cons we've been to in D.C., they don't have that luxury of just ignoring fire safety. Apparently, the fire, I heard the story. The fire marshal was there on Thursday or Friday and, and uh, Thursday. It was weird that we never saw around. him, though. I mean, Connecticut even. I see the fire marshal every day, like, poking his head in every single room and counting numbers. Yeah, so. New York City, same way. Katsukon, Virginia. I don't know. Alexandria. I don't know. I hope Magfest never burns down. Yeah, that'd be very bad. <laughs> so all that aside, Magfest was 
Super crazy awesome. Uh, well, it was super crazy All awesome. All right, so it to was qualify, good. it was the one. It was the most fun I have had at a non PAX convention in a long time. Right, but were those funds that you had? How much of those funds were Magfest's fault or your own fault? Well, right? the because trouble. Because if it if you can't attribute it to Magfest, if it's something that you could have done, say just. If you got a hotel room on your own. The trouble with that, though, is that you know, some of the things I could do on my own, but Mag what MAGFest provided was not the con or anything the con did, but the fact that a bunch of like-minded people all showed up in the same place. Yeah. Had there been no con and all the same people showed up, then, yeah, I could have done almost all these things. Yeah. But MAGFest and PAX are kind of polar opposites of the kind of cons we like. PAX is definitely the, if you go to this con... There is stuff to do that the con is giving you things like these epic stadium concerts and this giant tabletop library. Magfest is not that kind of con. Magfest is a room party, hang out with your friends, meet new people yeah. con. If you're not going to a concert or playing in the arcade, right, or going to a panel, you really don't need a badge. Pretty much everything else. Well, not only do you not need a badge, but you're not going to be able to, the con has nothing else to offer you except to make your own fun. There are nerds here at the same time as you make your own fun. And Have a room party, get your own gaming going on in tabletop. Do something on your own with these people to have fun. I mean, people stop to watch the football game, right? Because yeah. we were very close to Baltimore. So all the Ravens fans lined up How for the many game people would have walked out of PAX to go to bars and watch a football game? If, even, it, was, if it was a Seahawks playoffs game, they would have... Even then, if it's an important game, how many people would leave PAX for that versus people who were just chilling in MAGFest? Well, the difference was is if PAX was a hotel con and it, the game was on in the yep. hotel lobby in PAX and you could have watched it with all these PAX people. While you're playing games and drinking. Right. Because we spent most of our con in either tabletop or in the lobby of the hotel. Playing Jungle Speed mostly, but also many other tabletop games. And because it was a four-day con, we actually had a lot of time to play tabletop RPGs. We played a surprising number of, like, we played a whole free market, but... So the, the, the con is laid out. You know, we don't really do this about other cons we go to, because everyone knows how they're all laid out. If you've been listening to Geek Nights or going to these cons, not a lot of you have been to MAGFest. It's kind of small. People aren't flying from Seattle, so... I think it's worth it to talk about the layout. Uh, There's not much there. There's They had an Artist Alley vending area that... That was sort of mixed with the arcade. Everything was sort of, you know, the, the area where all the, you know, the vendors and the uh, games and all that stuff was all sort of squished into one space, um, sort of, you know, with some doors in between, right? Yeah. Um, so they had a panel area, like this long hallway, and at the end were three tiny little panel rooms. Tiny, itty, bitty. But also the uh, the jam space, the MAGFest famous jam space was down there, yep. which was sort of annoying because you could hear it in the adjacent panel rooms. It was a little annoying, but it was also kind of this, like, background groove. Well, yeah, well, it's like it's, it, it was like, okay, they put it over there because they wanted to keep it out of the way of everything else, which is what you should do because the jam space makes now, a lot of noise. Now, what they should have done, remember, in the hotel, right next to MAGFest was this gigantic like, open bar area that they probably could have rented out or used that they didn't. Yeah, that was in the That uh, should have been jam area. space. They should have put it in the retreat area, but I guess they just didn't. In fact, that. had they had the all the bands doing their jam space there and then paid the hotel to open that bar, that would have been a rockin' room. They could have made some awesome down Apparently, there were multiple parties that the, started the, in that room. Like, suddenly there'd be a party in that room, and the hotel kept shutting them down. I think part of the problem, though, is that room is so close to hotel rooms that it would disturb hotel guests. However, this hotel, for the venue that it was, if MAGFest were going to stay in this venue, they would have to get a contract with the hotel that basically literally rents out the entire hotel. Yeah. There were non-MAGFest people, yet MAGFest sold out, and anyone who was not MAGFest in that hotel was fucked. Fucked? Okay. <laughs> like, badly. I, I can't imagine them having enjoyed themselves and whatever yeah. they were trying to do. But anyway, yeah, so the vending area, you know, it had a mix. Uh, it was just a bunch of tables all cramped up. A surprising number, though, were selling retro game stuff. Like, yeah, they were doing the hard sell. One guy was like, check this out, Gold Zelda, Gold Zelda, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, come on, man. And I was you like... You know you want it. I, I was, was like, like... You know, it was, it was kind of weird because on the one hand, it was fun to walk around and look at all the stuff. But I wasn't buying any of it. Nah. But if you were a collector of that sort of thing or an aspiring collector, then this was like the place for you because there was never, I don't think there's any place else in the U.S. that's going to have that sort of collection of, you know, retro game stuff all in the same yep. place for I mean, sale. They were, and they were selling, like, there was a dude who had a Lynx in an unopened, still shrink wrap box. There was all sorts of crazy stuff like that. You know, if you could think of it, it was if it wasn't ultra rare, you know, ultra, ultra rare, it was there. You know? What was cool, though, is that it was also kind of an artist alley, and there were people selling the kind of stuff you see at, like, an Animecon artist alley. 
Mm. And and they were really good. I think the best guy was the one who had the like oil pixel paintings. Yeah, that guy was the best. We met, Those were we way met him, awesome. Uh, we met him on the final day, Sunday, when we were just about to leave. He was yep. he was a cool guy. What's weird is he was not the only one. There were a couple of these people that we talked to, and obviously not a representative sample, but enough to where I wonder. This is anecdotal. They never really went to other cons, and we were like, man, if you went to an anime con, and we explained like, yeah, Otakon is. An order of magnitude bigger than this. Yeah. The artist alley is bigger than all of Magfest. And Multiple your stuff, orders of magnitude. And bigger. your stuff is better than most of what we've seen there. Mm -hmm. You could make money. You could make money. Yes. And he's like, tell me more about these anime cards. Yeah, I don't know how much money you would make at the at the Magfest, but whatever. Yeah, but it, there was stuff there. I didn't buy anything, but I, I walked around. Either. There was a trouble that the the alleys, like the alley itself, there the, it was like this narrow. You basically couldn't walk through it. But you could you could walk through it very slowly. But it was never extremely crowded. You know, it was never like it, if you, it wasn't like a Otakon dealers room where people are packed in because they really want some shit, right? It was very you know there. It was cramped in space wise, but not so many people in that area. It was a chill hangout. Like some of the guests were hanging out there. James Rolfe, who we never actually talked to, was. Yeah, one person out. we really wanted to see at the con we never saw. Oh well. Well, because we were going to go to his panel, and I think we ordered Chinese food instead. Yeah. That happened a lot, ordering food. But actually, food delivery worked really well, yeah. unlike, unlike Kineticon. We got some slightly average, you know, okay Chinese food one night. We got, we some, got some okay pizza one night. Yeah, it was good. It was okay. Um, yeah, so right next to the dealer vending area was, you know, the pretty much the core of Magfest, which is the arcade and also the the console gaming room. So it's very rare that we will say this. Pax could learn a lot from how Magfest got their arcade set up. That's for sure. Pax has money and yet had the tiniest little arcade. Katsukon. Well, well, I mean the arcade, but the Pax uh, free play console room was a little different, right? Because the way the Pax free play console is, is they have all these consoles, yep. and you rent, you pick the game you want, right? Whereas the Magfest console was more the style of, you know, Otakon, where it's like these are the games that are set up, just go play. I think there should be a mix. I think it's a, it's, I like the idea of having I check out Kaboom and I go play it with my friends, but also the common games like. A bunch of people are going to want to play GameCube Smash Brothers. Have a whole area dedicated to that in the corner. Yep, and just have a whole bunch of chairs lined up with the right controllers, and people just loser walks, keep going. It was more that I don't think the t the logistics of the game room were better than Pax's game rooms or Otakon's game rooms or anything. Nope, not the culture was better. Yeah, the I mean there were there were certain items that were missing. Like there was no Rampart machine, which is you know personal. How for much us. can we complain about that? Katsukon's the only con that's ever gotten us a Rampart machine. But in terms by of by request, nonetheless, we were like, you guys get a Rampart machine, and they got it. Yeah, but in terms of you know total quality of you know the the whole collection of games there were to play in the arcade and the console it was like a plus right they had more arcade machines than katsukan has ever had and katsukan had way more than pax ever had of much better selection got right? plus yeah got plus they had i didn't even know there was a, a galaga they, they had a crane that you could play all yeah they just want. had a crane game full of stuff now they bricked up the end they're like all right you can't actually get the toys but you can play this crane game for free and it was way fun they had some pinballs but they kept breaking but they still had pinballs and, and they, they kept fixing them they kept fixing them as much as they, they had, could. They had 